Hey guys, what's going on? It's Eli, and uh, back again uh, now, because after reviewing the first film, now we come to the sequels, and with the first one, and joining me, of course, and you read the title, and special guest, uh, once again, uh, Trent Martin is back. Good to have you back. Hey, what's up? Yep. So, um... If you remember what we reviewed last time, and the first time that Trent joined, joined me, you know, video review collab, that is. Um, yeah, so go ahead and tell tell the viewers what we're reviewing now. Well, today we're going to be reviewing The Brave Little Toaster to the Rescue. Correct. So, we are reviewing, this is the first of the, this is the first sequel of The Brave Little Toaster. And, uh, yep, so... And it took, it was about a decade after the first one. It was the first one, the Brave, the Brave Little Toaster was in 1987. And this one, and the first sequel was in the late 90s. It was like 97. Well, the thing is, I remember hearing about this, is that the sequels were were released randomly. Like the last, the third sequel, the, the second sequel, The Brave Little Toaster Goes to Mars, was apparently fit, re, was released first. And The Brave Little Toaster the, to the Rescue, the second sequel, the first sequel that is, I meant to say, was released after. But, you know, but for those of us, like for those of you, like for those of us who hadn't seen The Brave Little Toaster films, obviously we would we would watch them in order. And yeah, I know I probably... I can't remember. Maybe I did watch the first, uh, the Brave Little Toaster to the rescue first, and then the, the one uh, where they go to Mars. But you know, it's been a long time, so I can't remember. But, and I know that because my friend Trent, he he did give this a watch before we reviewed it um, a, wh a while ago. Uh, and as as I record this, and uh, what did you think of the Brave Little Toaster to the rescue? We'll start with you. I think it was good, actually. Uh huh. Yeah, it was really good. Uh huh. Yeah, for me, I thought it was pretty good, too. Definitely, I can see, because all three Brave Little Toaster films, they're very, they have they have a different feel to it. Just, yeah, all three of them do. You still got the main characters. You got Toaster, you got Lampy, you got Kirby and Blanky and the radio. And this time, like, you still, you got, like, the the return of the of the cast, like, Dina Oliver as the Toaster, Timothy Stack as, the, as Lampy, and Thurl Ravenscroft, of course, versing Kirby. And, um, but this time, you've got, uh, Eric Lloyd voicing Blanky, and Roger K. Cabler voicing the radio. Um, John Lavoitz, if I'm saying his last name right, he voiced the radio in the first film, and Blanky was voiced by another kid actor. But, of course, obviously, the, the first voice for Blanky obviously grow, had grown up, and Eric Lloyd, who at the time was, you know, best known for being in the Santa Claus films, voices Blanky in the sequels. Yeah, he was not bad, and especially he had the perfect voice for Blanky. And Roger Cabler as the radio, he was fine. And you know what? The radio's the radio, and like the voice kind of being changed. I could, you know, I think you get, I think you get the idea. But some of the other characters, like you know, because from uh, you still got the human characters, the the objects, uh, Master Rob and Chris, uh, Rob's girlfriend, and. Um, Spoil and at the end of the film, like he he they become they become engaged and uh, some of the other characters this time because in the Brave Little Toaster to the rescue it's about like you know because saving the animals like you know now we have animals with the with the toaster gang and uh, one of them because uh, uh, Ratso yeah he's the only one I could really remember like there was a monkey with a broken arm there was a a, a mother kitten who who has a mother cat, I should say, with with three kittens who have not opened their eyes yet, and a uh, chihuahua. Um, and, uh, yeah, and, yeah, Ratso vo being voiced by Andy Midler. Um, yeah, I remember, I'm familiar with Andy Midler, but um, the songs in the film um, were not bad. Like, uh, i trying to remember. I'd say one song from Toaster and the others they were singing, but, um, yeah. But they were okay. I can, I, you know, and like one from, uh, oh gosh, what's his name? He's not showing up on, yeah, he is. Brian Dole, Brian Dole Mor Murray, one of the Murray brothers, voices w Wigdenstein. Probably said that right, but do you remember anything else? Uh, let's, let's go back to Trent. Uh, do you remember anything else, like, from watching the film, Trent? Uh, I don't think so, but I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> 
Okay, like any of the songs, for example? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I like the one Amos sing, uh, Remember That Day or something. Yeah, I mean, that was talk. I was trying to, I was mentioning that, but I forgot the name of the song, but thanks for reminding me. Yeah, that was, that was a pretty good one. And, um, yeah, and like, uh, I could, you know, some of the others, like one song from, uh, Wigdenstein was pretty good. And, uh, his, we, you know, cause, as he sings his backstory, I, th yeah, think, and even, uh, Eddie Deason voices, uh, somebody by the name of Charlie, like, helps out Rob and Chris, you know, because Rob was making a file and such, and it got lost, and this other character, Alberto, like, yeah, the main antagonist, basically, the jerk, I should say, yeah, and, um, yeah, oh, yeah, and Andy, Andy Daly, he voiced, uh, Murgatroyd, if I probably said that right. I'm I'm familiar with him. He was in the Yogi Bear film as the mayor. Um, some of the other cast, like uh, Patty Edwards and Eddie Bracken were in this, and Victoria Jackson and Kevin Meany and Jonathan Benair. I think I got that right. And oh yeah, and I forgot because Alfre Wood Woodrart probably got that wrong but i know her best like from say star trek first contact and then dinosaur captain america civil war and the live action lion king voiced uh sarabi but she uh yeah i believe yeah she's the voice of the cat so yeah and uh the stuff that like it had some emotional moments and that's the thing with the brave little toaster like it has its emotional moments and especially when radio uh radio sacrifices himself to say to to fit to help uh wigdenstein because of that um that piece you know that's to go in wigdenstein and with the help of chris uh helps rob like fix the radio when you know rob discovers the radio and ratso was pretty good like he starts off being kind of a jerk but later on as the as the film goes on you know he has heart and he helps out and you know it's very touching because Maisie, the cat like lets ratso be the first be the be let let him be the first one that the that her kittens see when their eyes open so that was that was touching um and the ending song to it like uh, that they sing as they're on the road that was pretty good too and yeah because like yeah like no the first one didn't have an ending song but this one does and uh yeah bright little toaster goes to, goes to mars it does but until we get until we review that so um but uh i'm trying to remember what else to to, to talk about about this film well a climax, like a truck chase, you know, like the toaster and the gang, they chase down the truck where, because the animals, it's all done by Alberto, you know, shipping the animals. So they, the toaster and the gang, they chase the, they chase, they chase Alberto in the truck, and so does Robin Chris. Um, but, and also, oh yeah, because even like, um, there was even like a, the dogs were also, they also helped out too, chasing down the truck, and there was a snake in that too in that film i might have been i'm not sure it could have been i can't remember who voiced the snake but oh well um uh, is there anything else you can remember do you want else you want to say about the film trend uh yeah it, 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 it was still good yeah it was still good okay i mean i was talking a lot and i just you know you deserve you know you should you should of course say something you know something else about the film yeah i know Okay. Uh, any any funny scenes or favorite scenes you have, or? Uh, <clears throat> okay. Uh, I, I, I like them all. Yeah. Even I remember. Okay, I do remember one scene. Like uh, Kirby was. Well, he was like. While Toaster, Lampy, and Radio and Blanky, they go off to, to to find well, along with Rat and along with Ratso, find Wigdenstein. Like Kirby left behind, and you know, he you know, he does like stay stay on guard, like protecting the animals, and he does so, and yet he like trying to attack and scare off Alberto, as he's he's almost about to whack uh, uh, Maisie the cat, so, you know. But um, I remember that too, and. Uh, yeah, that's all I can remember. And um, again, the the first the first of the first Brave Little Toaster sequel, the Brave Little Toaster to the Rescue, I thought was pretty good. And um, it was a an okay it was an okay sequel, pretty good. And uh, that is until we get to the the to the the third and final Brave Little Toaster film, both me and Trent, which that will be down the road. Say so you no. Know. 
Um, do you have anything else to say about the film and any last words, Trent? Uh, again, yeah, I thought it was good. I thought it was a good sequel. Good. Anything else? Anything else to say? And then any last words to finish off the review? Uh, anything? No. Okay. I don't think so. Okay. Okay. Well, um, yeah, so kind of just a bit similar to how our, our review of the first Brave Little Toaster turned out, but it was still okay. I think we did a pretty good job. So, eh, you know, not every, not every review video like this on YouTube has to be, you know, that great or, you know, it's just a decent and simple review, so, you know, from us. Uh, but anyway, so... Thank you, Trent, for once again joining me in reviewing the first uh, the first Brave Low Toaster sequel. You're welcome, man. Oh yeah, and we will, of course. Don't worry, we will. Both me and Trent will review the next one again. That's down the road. Um, but for now, because we hope you guys enjoyed our review of the of the Brave Low Toaster to the rescue. And oh yeah, because uh, starting with you, Trent, how do you rate this? Only you go first. How do you write it? Okay, okay, okay. Um, that's a. Let me think, cause uh, it's on my mind right now. I give this a. I give this eight out of ten stars. So there you go. Mm -hmm. So, what about what about you? Yeah, same here. Eight, eight, eight out of ten. Yeah. Okay, good, good. So that's both of us. We both give this eight out of ten stars. So. That's that, and um, it was good. It was great for us to review the Brave Little Toaster to the rescue. Um, and once again, Trent, thank you. Thank you very much for joining me. Yeah, you're welcome. Yep, and until we review the next Brave Little Toaster film, the Brave Little Toaster goes to Mars again. That's down the road. And don't worry, aside from the Brave Little Toaster films, well, and the last one, we'll, me and Trent will be doing more uh, review collabs, other stuff. So we've already talked about what we had in mind and... And so on from Scooby Doo, just you know, and of course that'll be down the road, just just like with the Brave Little Toaster Goes to Mars. So that's eight out of ten stars from both of us of the Brave Little Toaster to the Rescue. You guys, let us know what you thought of our review, what you think of the film. Leave comments as always. Give this review a like, and thank you yet again, Trent. Trent. Welcome. Yep. We hope you guys and we hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, you want want to say goodbye? Defend the, end the, end this off. Yeah. Yeah, bye guys. Yep. See you later. Yep, he says that for me. Hope you enjoyed our review of the Brave Little Toaster to the rescue, and we'll see you guys in the next video slash review video. Take care, and peace out.